Welcome. I assume in this video that you want to make your own files for 3D printing, or you're at least curious about that process. So this video is about several of the major pieces of software, more popular pieces of software used to create 3D objects. Now there are lots of different pieces of software out there that can be used for this. I'm not going to cover all of them. These are just some of the major ones. First off, Google SketchUp certainly one of the most popular options. It's free, available for multiple operating systems. And I believe it was originally intended for architectural 3D models. And it basically lets you take primitive shapes, cubes, spheres, cylinders, things like that, and combine them in a very easy, simple way. One of the reasons people like SketchUp is it's very intuitive, as opposed to a lot of other pieces of software out there that give you lots and lots and lots of options are a little harder to use. So SketchUp is a good place to start if you're into this sort of thing, and it's free. On the other side of the scale is Blender, which has tons of features and abilities, and you can do almost anything in Blender, but it comes with a very steep learning curve. There's a lot to learn just to get started with Blender. That's not quite as bad as a lot of people uh, make it out to be. You just have to accept the fact that with Blender, you're going to have to spend a few hours understanding that system and just kind of getting used to the way it works as opposed to just assuming it's going to make sense. There's a lot of learning initially, and it's, you know, a few hours will get you started and get you on your feet, and then you can kind of build from there. So it's definitely not one of those pieces of software where you can just jump in and get a lot done initially. On the other hand, because you can do anything with it, it's a useful skill to learn. Blender is the tool that I use almost all the time when I am building models for 3D printing just because there's everything in there. Another popular, if weird, option is called OpenSCAD. And I call it weird because it doesn't work like a lot of your typical uh, tools where you just go in there and start laying down objects. OpenSCAD is a programmatic 3D modeling tool, meaning that you actually write code which generates various objects. And the advantage being that you can write code that will create, say, cylinders, um, and you can create like 64 of them all in a certain pattern. Or you can have sh uh, spheres set up in certain ways. So you can do all sorts of interesting stuff with OpenSCAD kind of iteratively as you're creating objects and then taking pieces off of objects. and and building things that way. So in a sense, you can do almost anything with OpenSCAD that you could with another tool. You just have to code it to do all the operations that you would normally do with a package like Blender or SketchUp. Now, OpenSCAD is used a lot by engineers when they're building very specific things because then all of the parameters for those are in the code. So you can go and change little tolerances and so forth, and you know that those are going to be propagated all throughout the object because that's what the code does. However, you have to learn the code. So it's, again, a little more complicated than a lot of the other options and a very different mindset than Blender or SketchUp, but it definitely has its advantages, and it's free. Now, all of these tools I've mentioned so far involve taking primitives, i.e. spheres and cubes, and combining them and shaving pieces off them and so forth to build up the actual final object you're trying to, to print. Sculptress is very different. It's more like digital clay. With Sculptress, you're literally adding to and uh, uh, carving things off of, of 3D shapes as opposed to really combining them. So you're literally just you know smooshing in and extruding chunks of this object. As a result, Sculptress is ideal for things like people, animals, flowers, organic shapes, uh, which are much harder to do in other pieces of software. On the other hand, obviously, if you're trying to do a lamp, it's going to be harder to model that in Sculptress than in another package. So one of the reasons I mention this is that some people get into 3D printing for art because they want to sculpt and make pieces um, like statues and such. And so Sculptress is much better for that kind of thing uh, than a regular 3D modeling software. Um, but if you're looking for something, again, more rigorous, more, more um, hard-edged, Sculptress is not the way to go. So it's a tool worth knowing about. So those are the four pieces of software I wanted to talk about. Obviously, there are others. Um, some of them I'm just not as familiar with. 
Some of them I just haven't heard much about. So those are the ones I have experience with and thus can kind of talk to. So I hope that's helpful to you and I hope you will tune in for more 3D printing videos. Thank you for watching.